I've spent most of the last year working on a book about climate change, and the inspiration for that book has been my co-author, James Lovelock. Now, you're going to be meeting James in a minute, but I wanted to tell you a bit about him before you do. James is a scientist, and he's been a scientist for 70 years. You could paper a wall with the honorary degrees and doctorates he's been given by universities and institutions across the globe. You could paper another wall with the 200 and more scientific articles and papers that he's written. He's a science star, and he's worked on all sorts of things from how to protect soldiers from blast injuries during the Second World War, to organs for transplant, to monitoring pollutants in the air and the oceans. But James's most famous and biggest idea is Gaia theory. James, what made you want to be involved in a book for children? Well, it so happens I'm writing a book myself. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> and uh, it's a book about the future, very much the future of the Earth and civilization. And I think that future's for the young. So what, what better than to be uh, sharing with you thoughts on, uh, on the young? Could you explain what Gaia is? It's the right name for the Earth. It goes right back to Greek times. They called it Gaia right back then. And they had a feeling that it was more than just a lump of rock with wet with the ocean and with the air on it. They felt it was something alive. What I'm describing is a system uh, which is made up of everything. That's the surface rocks, the ocean, the atmosphere, and all the living things, including us, that self-regulates the planet so as to keep it habitable. And since the Earth is whole Earth is made up of a whole series of ecosystems, the combined response of all of them is trying to keep the Earth habitable, a place where, where life can work at its best. Why is the idea of Gaia so important to understanding climate change? Well, if I wanted to know why you had a fever, it's important to know something about physiology, about how your, your body works. You can't treat it in isolation and say, uh, well, nickel is just a lump of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and her temperature happens to be anomalously high. It, it isn't any answer, but if you understand a bit about physiology, how a living organism works and tries to keep its temperature always at an optimum, the fever represents an abnormality. And in a sense, what's happening to the Earth now is a bit like a fever. At first it tries to counter the changes, but if it's unsuccessful, like any animal, it flies away. It flees, escapes from the danger. And that is what it's now doing. And it's escaping to a state, a hot state. It's been in many times before, and it always goes to if there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But it sustains life in that hot state, but all of the furniture on the planet, so to speak, is moved around and it's a very different place. Do you think humanity has got a future? I do indeed. Um, you see, to start with, Gaia is very tough. She's three and a half billion years old and has faced all manner of disasters, far worse than anything we're doing, and is still around. Uh, we're also a very tough species, one of the toughest of animals there are. So I think the pair of us are going to carry on for quite a while yet. <laughs> However, it, make no mistake, what's up ahead of us is an exceedingly rough event. The, the, there is a future, an evolutionary future for humans to gradually grow more intelligent and become part of the planet. So, so as to make Gaia perhaps the first intelligent citizen of our galaxy, a planet that automatically thinks for itself and defends itself. It's no use pretending that climate change isn't going to affect everything about the way we live our lives over the coming decades. It's no use pretending that it's going to be easy. But what the people interviewed for this book have found is that fighting it can be the most stimulating, exciting and worthwhile way to live your life. People like Kasper Takule and Emma Biermann, campaigning experts. Justin Schlossberg, rock star turned no flights travel agent. Holly Bruford, getting kids to bike it. Jim Logan, 
Designing buildings you don't need to heat. Nin Castle, making high fashion from rubbish. Neil Jennings, making students switch off their lights. Roberto Pedraza, keeping CO2 safely locked in forests. Duncan Gibson, helping people cut their food miles. Forkbeard Fantasy Theatre Company, making climate change into comedy. They're all in their way warriors for Gaia, and they show that whatever you do, whoever you are, you can make a difference. I believe that facing up to the reality of climate change gives us an opportunity to make a better, fairer world. In fact, I think it could be the making of us.